Yeah. What is the notion? What is your notion of truth? <sighs> um, so that's a long question, um, and, and I. I think it's fair to say that one of my criticisms is we have a notion of truth that is too separate from um, the different ways in which we obtain knowledge about the world. Um, so, uh, uh, so our standard way of understanding truth, and, and the interesting thing about the, thing about the Greeks, for example, is they had four different terms for talking about this. Um, so. The model we have, the, 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 the dominant model we have is propositional truth. So we have propositions and then we determine if they're accurate or they correspond. And of course, there's a lot of philosophical debate, right? But some notion of they correspond to reality in one way. And that's, that's our epistemic sense of truth. And, that, and I think, if I understand him correctly, because it's very hard to pin Harris down because he always claims to be misunderstood when people try to criticize him. But anyways, uh, I think that the form, the notion of truth he is advocating is exactly that notion, and he thinks that's the sole notion of truth. What I think Jordan to be doing with his notion of, of a pragmatic notion of truth, I think he's conflating a bunch of different things together. In his own little pre Petersonian form of truth. Yeah, because he talks about you know, the, 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 the truth in the world of action, right? And he talks about this in terms of pragmatism, and, and I take him to be using a, something like a Jamesian notion of, of pragmatism. Um, let me try and get at that. Um, there's, there's, so in addition to knowing that things are the case, like knowing that that is a cup, right, and that's propositional knowing, there, there's procedural knowing, which, and I think that's part of what Jordan's talking about. So I know how to catch a ball. I know how to ride a bicycle. That's a skill. It's not a theory. It's a skill, right? Um, and, and, you know, there, it, it's even, you know, realized in different functions, areas of the brain, etc., uh, things like that. So when I talk about skills, I don't talk about them being true or false, right? I talk about them being apt or inept. And that's pragmatic. That, that's part of what uh, pragmatism means, I think. Um, because to be apt or inept means that well, you have some goal. Well, it, there's some goal, um, but it, it, it's also the appropriateness or the fittedness of the action. So the standard there isn't really a standard of truth. So let me, let me try it this way. I think all the knowledges have a different way of talking about ways in which we find things to be real. One way is propositional truth. Then another, what skills give us is, they give us a sense of realness in terms of power, right? How much power we are able to wield, how much our actions can intervene and alter uh, the course of things. And that's definitely what's being um, emphasized by certain forms of pragmatism. Um, and it, you can even see it in, in some postmodernisms when Foucault is talking about the relationships between knowledge and power, right? And I think, but I think there's another notion. So the Greeks have ep episteme for, you know, theoretical truth, propositional truth. They have techne for these procedural techne. ability. Techne. It's where we get our word technology from. This is the this is the knowing how to do things. Mm. Like, so is that related to perspectival knowledge? No. I would say that that's a different thing. Um, and so I think the Greek word that corresponds to that is noesis. And so this is closer to our word for like noticing. And so what perspectival knowing is, right, knowing what it's like to have a particular salience landscape, knowing what it's like to be here now with these things salient to me and these things backgrounded, these things foregrounded. I'm offended that you refer to me as these things. <laughs> no, it's a bunch of things, sorry. What relationship does the perspectival knowledge have to truth? And also, let's just get to your notion of truth. Because right now, you're reiterating what you think Peterson's notion of truth is, or Sam Harris's. Well, I am. So, well, I'm trying to get to my notion by distinguishing and contrasting mine with both Harris and Peterson. So unlike Harris, I think that there, I think truth belongs to a family, right, of ways of deciding how things are real for us. And then I think Jordan is calling, what Jordan is talking about, he's talking about uh, some aspect of our procedural knowing, our techne, and one way things strike us, a criterion we use for determining if things are real is their power, which is different from right, the accuracy of our propositions. The perspectival knowing, studying this right now with Dan Chiappi, it has a different sense of realness to it. It comes with this notion of presence. 
So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, we're, we're, we're currently studying um, scientists who do work with um, like the rovers on Mars. And what's interesting there is um, this notion of telepresence, being on Mars, mm -hmm. right? And you have to, you, it's important that you know that the, the rovers are not joy, joystick controlled. You can't, in fact, you can't do that because the time delay is too great. So what you do is you get batch, you get all these photos and all this data, and then you sort of process it, and then you set up a set of instructions uh, like to, to Curiosity or right, things like that. Now what's interesting is you look at these people, and you can see similar things when people are trying to do VR, right, virtual reality. They talk, they, 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 they talk about being on Mars. They, 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 they have this perspectival sense of being on Mars, and they, they, they'll do things like they'll, like, um, you know, okay, so, you know, the rover needs, oh, here's my camera, and they'll say, you know, I, I need to, and they'll say, they'll do that. They'll do first-person perspective, first-person perspective. I, I need to turn this way. I need to turn this way, right, because the, light, the, the light's going to be here, and, and, and it's, if, I, if, I, if I don't turn this way, if I turn this, I, I, won't, I won't be able to get what I need. And they, and they do all this perspectival adjustment from the first-person perspective, right? And so what, what's really important to them, right, and, and they look for it in the people that are trying to join the team, is that sense of being on Mars, being there, that sense of presence. And it's, it's also a, a and notice the word we use, virtual reality. It becomes more real to us when we get a sense of presence, when we get that sense of immersion, when we get that sense that we're, we have a perspectival salience landscape that is working for us. So perspectival knowing, noesis, has this sense of presence. And then I think there's a, a third, uh, there's a fourth one, and you, and, and you can see it also a bit in what I was talking about um, with the scientists, right? There's a participatory knowing. This is, this is, and this goes to gnosis as a Greek term. This is knowing by sharing a fundamental identity uh, with things. And so, for example, uh, the scientists are identifying with the rover. Uh, and that's why they'll say, I. And, and when, you, when you write to identify with your pen, is that similar or not? Uh, well, that, th I think that's part of it. I mean, so part, when I'm writing, I think part of, there's two parts to the identification process. Part of it, when, when, when I'm identifying with something, I, is I'm doing what... Um, uh, uh, Polanyi calls in dwelling. Like I'm actually not sensing it. I'm sensing through it, right? And you're you're not, actually you're typically not paying attention to the pen when you're writing. You're paying attention to it. So that's one way. But you you also do something else that you probably aren't doing with the pen as much. You do internalization. So for example, you have metacognition. You are able to reflect on your own thinking. You don't come with that, right? You get that by imitating adults when you're a kid taking a perspective on you. And so you imitate them taking a perspective on you until eventually you can do that for yourself. You internalize other people's perspectives onto you. And that's partially also how you get enculturated. So we identify things, and this is what you can see them doing with the rover. They're sort of indwelling, they're seeing through the rover, but they're also internalizing it into, you know, sort of becoming the rover. And we have lots of ways in which we have this kind of participatory knowing. So a really important way, um, and, and I think this goes towards some of Jordan's concern with narrative, although well, narrative also involves perspectival knowing. But we think of ourselves as temporally extended selves, like, you know, here's my past, here's my future. And so we have this sort of autobiographical sense of, our, of ourself as extended in time, right? That, again, isn't, isn't sort of natural to us. We, we, we acquire that. Um, and we acquire it be through the constantly practicing narrative. And this is some of Daniel Hudo's work on the narrative practice hypothesis. We again think that thinking in narrative is natural to us, but notice that we spend so much bloody time practicing it. And we practice it all the time with each other. Like how? You meet somebody at a party, and they want to know who you are. What do you do? You tell them your story. You go to home at the end of the day. People want to know, how'd your day go? You tell them your story. We, but we wouldn't think of that as practicing, but we are. But we are. And notice what you do when you have a kid. What do you do? You have to practice narrative. And do, you do, do they get narrative right away? Can, can they tell or understand jokes right away? No. And if you ask them to tell a story when they're really, Bleh. So what do we do? We, 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 I mean, I've had two kids, so I had to go through this. 
you know, you, you, you watch the Teletubbies. So narrative is not innate, but it's useful. It's, 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 and it's culturally universal. And like, it's, it's, so that, that, that to me, so it's not innate, but it's culturally universal. Yes. Because we usually look across cultures to see, do we all smile when we're happy? And then we say, oh, okay, we can infer so, that yeah. that's innate. Yeah, so you, you should use, uni I mean, universality is important. Um, so I, I don't usually make the inference directly from universality to innate. I make the inference usually to universal for having some fundamental function, right? And those aren't the same thing, as you just pointed out, right? And so let's go back to the Teletubbies. We, we do this really, really simplified narrative and, and watch the show. It's, it's horrific, right, as, as an adult, because it's repetitive and repetitive. And we're doing this because we have to... We have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and slowly make it more complex until eventually we can do narrative and then eventually we can indwell narrative. I can start to see the world as a story and then I can also start to internalize the world as a story and I become a story. I'm a story and the world is a story. Now that's participatory knowing. I'm a story participating in a story and that story is participating in me. And that right? That's, that's gnosis. That's, a, that's, a, that's another kind of knowing. And it, it, it gives you the realness uh, of, of that ultimate sense of being, right, in tune, attuned, sort of one between you and the world. And so I think all of these are different ways in which we, we make judgments about realness. And I think it's a mistake. So here's the, how I return back to both... Uh, Harris and Jordan, I think it's a mistake to try and equate truth to any one of these. I think we should understand that truth, we should reserve it for what it's prototypically meant, the, the accuracy, the correspondence between the content of our propositions in the world. And we should think about power, we should think about presence, and we should think about attunement as additional ways in which we connect up to realness. And now, now I can now answer your question. Those ways in which we connect up to realness, especially the, the procedural, the perspectival, and the participatory, that's where a lot of the meaning that goes into meaning in life is to be found. What would Peterson say to that? What would his objection to that be? Because he would say he has a strong belief in his notion of truth, yeah. and then you just how you just you also seem to to I don't know if it's conflating, but to equate realness with truth. No, I was, trying to, I, I was trying to say that truth is one of the ways we judge things to be real in a propositional fashion. Power is one of the ways we judge things to be real in a procedural fashion. Presence is one of the ways we judge things to and be real. And by power, real. you just mean influence? Influence, Dominion. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't mean like, you know, political Brutality. Power. No, no, I don't mean anything like that, no. Um, Opr I, I, oppression. I, pardon me? Oppression. No, no, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to give it any political overtones. And then um, one of the ways we, you know, the, the participatory way we judge things to be real is this sense of participatory attunement with things. So every different point of view has its own realness to it? Well, I don't think these are points of view. I think these are fundamentally, diff uh, these are fundamentally different ways in which we know and come into contact with reality. And these are the grounding ways in which we try to make the connections to reality that underlie, I mean, one of the things that people, even if you look at the psychology of meaning in life, one of the things that makes people feel that they have a meaningful life is how connected they are, connection, right? How connected they are to, you know, to, to something greater than themselves, something more real than themselves. Does have a relationship.